Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to do take two on using Photoshop, uh, the full version of Photoshop in um, Windows 10 on the Surface Pro 7. Let's get started. Okay, so yeah, take two on this video. The first one I did, I was going back through the video footage, and even though the, the compass or, or, the, or the, you know, overall consensus of the video is that it was acceptable, the problem is, is there was two reflections that were coming from the window in front of me, and they moved across the entire screen for the duration of the 40 uh, minutes that I was drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and try something a little bit different. Hopefully this won't be too aggravating for you guys. So this morning I'm working on the Service Pro 7. We're going to be going into the full version of Photoshop. This is Microsoft's latest and greatest all-in-one i5 processor with the 10th generation i5 and one file new uh, i5 with uh, 8 gigs of RAM. So we're going to start out with a new document. 300 dpi, 15 by 12 resolution, create RGB. Actually, we're going to go a little bit bigger. So let's do edit canvas size, pixels, inches. We're going to do, let's do... 18, so we'll do 18. Okay. Alrighty. Edit fill, foreground color. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, a lot of the questions that I get have to do with the capability of the machines that I'm running on. This particular machine uh, was purchased. Um, recently, I uh, believe, gosh, not even a month ago. So it is relatively new. It's got all the latest and greatest updates. And, uh, you know, I've wanted to do a live drawing, not really a tutorial, but just a drawing to show you what the capabilities of this machine and what I use it for on a day-to-day -day basis. So for many of you, <clears throat> what you're looking for is something that, that can do pretty much everything. Unfortunately, that's that's one of those machines that is kind of like a unicorn. You know, it's super powerful. It's got great battery life. The screen looks incredible. It's got so many peripherals, uh, you know, peripheral ports that you can plug anything into it. It's a 4K screen. You can run full apps on it. It's got great uh, pin technology. Uh, it's super durable, and it's super fast. And uh, unfortunately, there aren't too many things out there that flip the bill. And it's inexpensive, <laughs> you know. Um, one of the machines that I had uh, a while back, which was the HP ZBook, covered pretty much everything except for the cost. Those machines run at about $3,200 to $3,500 a piece, depending on which one you get. And for the your average Joe just looking to get into illustration or art or even a professional sometimes the professionals don't have that kind of green to plunk down on a new machine um i was just very fortunate to get it at a really good deal uh but eventually i found out that i really didn't use it <laughs> so i went ahead and sold it so what i'm doing um right now is just showing you a real world scenario of how i would use the machine and uh, i paired it with the xp pen remote which is a great companion for the Surface Pro devices or any device that you want to just sit down and have pre-programmed uh, quick keys and maybe a scroll wheel that you can go in and, uh, you know, not have a keyboard to the left or to the right of you. Um, that's another great thing about the, the uh, HP ZBook uh, device that I had was the keyboard was Bluetooth. So it actually, you could, uh, you know, detach the keyboard and it was really cool. So, um, you know, hindsight being 2020, you know, we all look at, at our, uh, our expenditures throughout the year. And I looked at it at first and I'm like, you know, I really don't use it as much, but what I'm realizing is I really, really liked it. And I'm probably going to have to end up buying another one. Um, but this time going around, I'm going to change things up a little bit and I'm going to try and get the eighth generation, um, processor, 
uh, for, um, you know, for that particular model. And it's expensive. Those are expensive. Because once you start getting into those processors, then you start really dealing with, uh, you know, a really powerful machine. And they're expensive. Okay, so what am I drawing? I'm just drawing basically a character. Just something really simple. Something that I might uh, design maybe for a game or maybe a children's book or something that, you know, I might do in a coffee house if, if I'm sitting there and I've got my Surface device. And, you know, whenever I was first looking at this particular device, the Surface Pro 7, I was looking at it going, gosh, I've already got a Surface Pro 5. You know, the Surface Pro 5 is okay, but the one that I have, it's the... Uh, it's the i5, which is, you know, that's good, but it's only got four gigs of RAM. And I kept running into the issue of running out of, um, of horsepower. And that sucks, especially whenever you're, you're drawing and you're trying to come up with, you know, really cool concepts and your machine keeps choking. And I was running Photoshop on it and it kept choking and I was really getting frustrated. Um, and I read... Of course, you read <laughs> and you watch some reviews. There weren't like a huge amount of reviews on the Surface Pro 7 on YouTube for uh, art. You know, they would get the machine and, you know, they would say, oh, it looks very nice and fit and finish is nice. And and uh, all these little, you know, little reviews. And occasionally you get somebody that would draw on it. I know Brad Colbo, he now calls himself Brad Cowboy because everybody used to get his name wrong. I think it's funny. He fully embraced it. He's like, all right, I'm done. I'm just going to go ahead and go full Brad, Brad Cowboy, <laughs> which I thought was awesome. So uh, kudos to you, uh, Brad Cowboy. Anyway, Brad reviewed it. And of course, you know, now that the iPad is out and some of the other devices that are in the marketplace, he wasn't very positive about the Surface Pro 7. And I understand why, because it is kind of like a midterm refresh. You're putting faster processors in an old design. And he's an industrial, um, you know, interface designer. And he's very intuitive about uh, interface design and things that, you know, really benefit the user. And honestly, you know, how minimalistic this particular device is, uh, is really, it, it, you know, it's one of those old adages. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, but in today's day and age and the capabilities of manufacturing, it really sucks whenever you, you go and you buy a machine that looks exactly the same as the previous two iterations of that device. Here's my Surface Pro 5. <laughs> Literally, it is exactly, it's in a case right now, it is exactly the same form factor. <clears throat> the only difference, of course, being that USB-C uh, port on the side uh, that is there to help you know, power users or, uh, you know, general users um, that, you know, want to have something a little bit uh, more modern instead of having just the old USBs on the side. Um, you know, let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Okay. <clears throat> Anywho. So, uh, another thing that I've noticed, and, and, and I commented this on the last um, video that I did, that you guys... Here's the deal. I can post it, but it's, I don't know. It's one of those deals where I look at it and go, gosh, I, I really shouldn't post this. And so I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and destroy it. Anyway, what I noticed was, is the way that I draw a lot of times I'll be drawing and I'll lift my hand up. And typically the only part that hits is going to be my finger. And because of the way the palm rejection works, um, on windows, um, it, I started getting really weird false positive hits and the cursor would go in a different area. So I've changed, uh, I've changed the way that my hand rests on this machine and hopefully it's going to fix that issue. I'm not really sure. I hope that's what it was. <coughs> Microsoft had a palm rejection issue with this machine for almost a year. I want you to think about that. A year people have had to deal with this issue. And that is absolutely horrible. A year. I've had my machine for, what did I say, a month and a half, month, two months, roughly? I could not imagine dealing with that issue for a year. And, them, and you calling them and then not dealing with it. I mean, that is just... Oh. 
yeah. So as you see, I haven't really had any issues with lag. The parallax, which is very slight um, on this machine. One of the things that it does have that I've, I've learned to kind of ignore. I know that some people can't ignore it because it, it really inhibits their workflow. And that is the, the, uh, the horizontal jitter. Okay, so there it is right there. It's in full force. Now, this is the Raphael 520. See, we've got it here, we got it there, we got it there, we got it there. So all, yeah, the, the, the diagonal jitter is definitely there. The vertical, straight as an arrow. The horizontal, nice. It happens whenever you go to the diagonal. You see, and, I, and I'm pretty sure, again, that has to do with the digitizer. So just as long as it doesn't affect your workflow, then just, you can either get a smoother or whatever. Now I did notice in Clip Studio Paint, it is not as prominent. So maybe Microsoft needs to talk to Clip Studio Paint to see what they're doing. And that is even without a smoother. So um, yeah, see, it just did it right then. So if you noticed it, I'll be drawing and I'll lift my thing, my hand off slightly, and then I'll put, I'll, I'll raise it up a little bit and then I'll hit my XP pen remote. And for some reason, it'll, it'll kind of mess up the location of the cursor. Okay. So let's go up here. What am I drawing? Just a character, just a character. It's, it, I'm not here to draw, uh, a, uh, any specific character. I just wanted to show you the, the ins and outs of the Surface Pro 7 using Photoshop. So this is the full version of Photoshop. This is not a dumbed down version installed. I own licenses for it and all the other Adobe products because I use them in my professional work. A little claw. Um, so I also did a review on this particular stylus, the Raphael, uh, 520. It is a great stylus. I had some issues um, with the surface in that um, something was wrong with one of the drivers. I think the touch driver was gone or off or something was going on. And I ended up having to completely reset the entire machine. And I've had to do that quite a bit lately. I had to do it with my HP. I had to do it with my Surface Pro 5, and now I had to do it with my Surface Pro 7. I don't, I, you know, I used to work with a guy that used PCs all the time, and he said, yeah, that's normal. No, that is not normal. I don't care if you're, you've owned a PC for, for however long. It is not normal for an entire operating system to be crap. So shame on you, Microsoft. <laughs> shame on you. Let's have his thumb come right here. Okay, so let's move him over. Yeah, see that? Now notice that right there. Okay, you saw it right there. You saw the thumb down below. You see, it keeps doing it. Maybe, maybe it's not. I don't know. So I was going to try and be positive about this. It, it sketches really well. The pressure curve's really nice, especially with the Raphael. Um, especially with that Raphael stylus. And overall, it is a positive drawing experience. Now, over the past couple days, um, I have uh, actually worked quite a bit on my iPad. And I had really forgotten how good the iPad is because, man, the iPad is so freaking good. The only downfall that I can see the iPad has is the fact that it doesn't run full applications. Let's get rid of that. I can't stand the blinking. It doesn't run full applications. Because let me tell you something. If and when they get that machine to run full apps, first of all, it's going to destroy the, uh, the sales of the MacBook. Because, man, gosh, and I know they're never going to do it, so I don't even know why I'm talking about it. They're never going to do that. 
So does this particular machine or pen have tilt? Yes. And uh, it's got 4,000 levels, 4,096. Levels. See, there it is right there. See that control? See, I wonder, and my hand was resting squarely on there. There it is again. There it is again. So again, so now let's check the pixel size. I'm sorry, the brush size. 500. Okay, so that brush is huge. So it's actually, I mean, it's pretty good. And this is a textured brush, so it eats up more resource, GPU resource. So let's shrink it down to something reasonable. Let's do, let's do 300. Wow, pretty nice, dudes. A little bit of lag, so now, okay, so, but that's in a 300 pixel density. So let's go down about 100. So this is probably where I live most. And there's no lag at all. Not bad. I'm sure if we had the upgraded machine, you know, the one that has the 16 gigs of RAM, it might be a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Nice. I don't know what that is. Let's get rid of that. Let's get that nice flow. Um, I follow quite a few people on Instagram, and one of the girls that I follow, she uses a Surface Pro 4. I don't know what iteration it is, but she does quite a bit of her professional work on there, uh, sketch-wise. And... Uh, you know, she's, she, I'm sure, is very used to all the little intricacies and stuff that these machines have. Yeah, see the blinking? I thought that, at first I thought it was a graphics card, but it did it, it did it on my HP, and so it's, it's a Photoshop issue. So, okay. So that's the little graphic sketch. Now we'll go back. Okay, so right now, what I think is going on, and this is pretty indicative of a PC experience. It's something that you're going to have to get used to. So you see this little box right here? Where is it at? This little box right here. So that is probably a graphic anomaly. So let's go ahead and go here, and it's still there. So I think this has to do with the touch don't quote me on it but it's probably to do with the touch whoops okay so we're getting a little bit of freakiness right now so i've got okay so we got that freakiness being unpredictable the unpredictable nature of working on a pc now like i said before yeah see there's okay so it, it just happened it literally just happened so I went to erase this, so I erased this, I pulled back, and then it erased two inches below me. Again, I think this has to do with Windows, okay? Everything else has worked great, but it's the little things that make the machine absolutely a challenge to work with. You know? Okay, so let's go back. Let's see what she set up. Let's go in. Preferences. Performance. Okay, we're at 67% RAM allocation. I could probably boost that up a little bit. But I'm, I'm basically opening it up where it was set whenever I first installed uh, Photoshop. Uh, you can change your uh, tile size. I've changed the history. And you can also boost up your cache levels depending on uh, the file size that you have. Seven, okay. So let's go in back. Okay. Let's make sure. Good, we're on the right layer. Okay, so now we're gonna continue. Let's get rid of the... Now I've got my um, little XP pen remote where I can zoom in and out. First, I can hit that center button and it zooms in and out like this with the scroll wheel. I don't typically use that. 
I use it for brush size because I can use these two button pre-programmed. I click those and then, and then it comes up with my little eyedropper and I can zoom in and out. And as you see, there is no lag when it comes to this. And this is a 300 DPI 18. Actually, it's bigger than that now. It's a pretty big document. So what I'm doing now is just going back and this is about how fast I will draw an ink on my desktop machine. I don't want to slow things down because I wanted to test the machine the exact way I would normally draw whenever I'm working. I would have my headphones on and I just start turning and burning, right? And it's doing pretty good. I mean, I don't really feel any discernible lag. Let's make it, let's give me a little nose right here. Let's give it this. Let's have that out like that. Okay, then you have that lip come around. And then that tooth comes out. Kind of a buck tooth, snaggle tooth creature. And rotate works just fine, just as if it would work when I'm working on my desktop Mac. Because that's what I work on whenever I do my professional work. And you're like, okay, so you like PCs, but you work on a Mac. Yeah, and there's a really good reason for that. It's because... Number one, and this is just from experience, um, in terms of reliability, the Macintosh and the operating, uh, the operating system, the Apple operating system, to me, tends to be a little bit more reliable. Okay. There it goes. Okay. All right. Pressure is really good. I mean, really good. It's just, and with this little rubber tip on here, it's hard for me not to sing its praises. You know, it's just so good. It feels so good. Like I said before, when the, when the Microsoft products work, they work really good, but when they fail, Oh man, oh, we had a little bit of a pressure issue there. Now I did try to use my, oops, let's do this a little bit up there. My Surface Pen, because I do own one. And it was pretty good, but for my money, the way the Raphael feels is really, it's hard to beat the way this particular stylus feels on the Surface device. Okay, so let's do this. All right. Now, the reason why I wanted to do a real-time um, drawing for you guys, number one, I don't do a lot of real-time stuff. Whoops. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Okay. I don't do a lot of real-time stuff because a lot of people don't want to sit here and go through and watch a stinking hour-long video of somebody drawing. Some of you guys do. Some of you guys could care less. You want the quickie. I get that. You don't have a lot of time. You've, you know, you're go to the bathroom and you're sitting on the toilet and you got your iPhone out. For those of you who do that, if you do, you're gross and disgusting. Um... Uh, and you want to watch a video, a five-minute video, you know? And I get that. On the other hand, it's hard <laughs> to cater constantly to that because you're not getting a lot of meat. You're getting a lot of candy. And <clears throat> don't get me wrong, he likes me candies. Much 
you know, it seems funny that older I get, the more and more candy is just so good. Anyway, so, um, I to make sure I keep an eye on my time. Uh, it's kind of hard to show a really detailed video unless I do time lapse. And if you do time lapse, you can't really see the performance on how the machine really responds and reacts. Okay, so now we're going to save. So I've got this pre-program. I'm going to hit S. It comes up. And we're going to do, um, let me see here. So let's do vid test ch one. Pretty simple, right? Photoshop document, save. Okay, and I saved it just to the desktop. Okay. And it was almost instantaneous. It didn't sit there and chew. So now we get to go, we get to do his little belly. And I want to zoom in and out. There we go. Okay. Let me get rid of that because the blanket's going to drive me crazy. All right. Thanksgiving's coming up. Hopefully you guys that celebrate that holiday. If you don't, no pressure. But if you do, enjoy. Go be with the people that, you know, you want to be with and, um, you know, celebrate the holiday that's the way that you deem fit to you. I always spend it with family and I always save my calories up and end up eating way too much. But isn't that the, uh, not the American way, you know, or the European way? I don't know. We all eat too much, right? Or do we? Hmm. Okay. Whoops. All right, as you see, I'm able to go in, zoom in and out, no lag. I'm going literally as fast as I normally draw. Big document. Let's go ahead and rotate a little bit. Decent sized document. It's not like a gigabyte. <laughs> a little known fact, I used to work with a girl. Um, uh, she wasn't a girl, she was a woman. And she was a professional. She had been doing this a very long time, but she came from the publishing world. And, you know, she'd work in CMYK, uh, which is fine. I mean, CMYK is fine. Uh, and her documents were huge. I mean, like 1.7 gigabytes. And this is, you know, I worked in apparel for a long time. You don't need a 1.7 to 2 gigabyte file. It's overkill. And she would do like 600 DPI. And that's what she was used to working in. And she would she would routinely fill up her hard drive. And I kept telling her, I would say, can you work in RGB? I mean, we don't really, you know, they'll do all, everything on the production side. And she said, well, I just, that's the way I think. And I said, okay, you know, that's, you know. See, I, I was a really easy uh, person to work with. Um, unless, of course, you got in my face, then that's no good. Or if you tried to impose your your, you know, crappy ideals or opinions of other people and, and create a hostile work environment. I wasn't about that. That's garbage. Um, but, you know, I want you to be able to create the way that you create and feel comfortable doing it. That was, you know, that was my deal. So it seems to be doing pretty good uh, overall. And this is no different than the other video I had. Of course, the other video, you had a nice white spot here and a nice white spot here, and it would slowly move because the sun, it was, you know, going across. Let's get rid of that blinking. Let's zoom out. So, to answer your question, will the Surface Pro 7 run Photoshop? Yes, it'll run it very well, uh, doing what I'm doing right here. Now, if you get in here and get like 40 layers in a CMYK document, 50 layers, 200 layers, 300 layers, 
it probably will start lagging if you start running a lot of filters or if you have a lot of filters in your document. Filters um, tend to eat up a lot of uh, system resources and that's when you start having some issues, right? Uh, I don't use a lot of system filters. I never have. I, I use Photoshop primarily as a painting program. I have used it as a uh, as a compositing program. I've used it, I've done 3D work in here. Um, yeah, there, believe it or not, there is a 3D feature in Photoshop. I've done um, quite a few different things. Painting, separations, um, gosh, you name it, uh, in Photoshop. And it's a great, it's kind of a catch-all. It's like a Swiss Army knife uh, of programs. Okay, so now I get to go back in. Whoops, I'm going to do that. Okay, so what am I doing? <sighs> okay, so let's go ahead and save the document really quick and boom, saved. So let's, I mean, it's a pretty decent size. Of course, we're only at three layers. So let's go ahead and jack this back a little bit. Okay, I love having sketch work. So I always layer merge down and I literally come back and I just start drawing F, F. Okay, so. Another thing that I think is causing a little bit of a, uh, that shift, that parallax shift that I keep seeing possibly is the tip. And you see the tip, how I keep pushing harder and harder. Now, this is the soft tip, and I'm eventually I'm probably going to end up breaking this off. So let me switch this out really quick. Okay, so I've switched nibs. This is the nib that came in the Raphael 520. Let's see how this one does. Um, a lot of times, uh, and I think I noticed this. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to change the hardness. So let's go, I'm gonna show you how to change the hardness. So go over here, come down to the Surface app. This is where you adjust the uh, pressure curve. So uh, right now I have it at five, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jack it to four. Let's go here. That's pretty good. And you can actually see the pressure curve, constant. They used to be what's called staircasing, and they've gotten rid of that anomaly. So that's really cool that they fixed that. Okay. Much better. Now, one of the things that I'm not really keen on when it comes to the um, little rubber nib uh, on the harder side is a lot of times it leaves little marks on your screen. Now, for a long time, if you guys remember, if you look at some of the other, yeah, see, I've already noticed. So this nib is causing issues already. It's causing a break. The, the, it's not reading the pen the whole time. And this is obviously a Raphael issue. Let's see. No. And two, whenever you tilt it on its side, it's not actually hitting that nib, it's hitting the plastic. So maybe I need to change my hand positioning to be a little bit more upright. You're like, I ain't changing anything. Nobody's changing the way I draw. Well, yeah, I completely agree with you. You draw the way you need to draw with the tools that you need to draw with, but you're going to get frustrated. So you just have to go with the flow. As you see, I'm not seeing any lag at all. Now, like I said, this is not a super complex <laughs> image, right? 
So let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of taper off my pen. I'm going to, I'm going to jack up. I'm going to try to jack up. Okay. So now we're going to mess around. We're going to mess around here. Oh, we're going to want that pressure on. We're going to jack back that opacity. Okay. We're going to have that come down here. Okay, so it's doing weird things. So it might be because of the pen, guys. I'm not really sure. So let's go ahead here. You know how I can test it. Okay. I've actually got another pen. Okay, another Raphael pen. Let's see how this one does. Okay, the pressure curve is a little bit different on this one. So we're going to go ahead and push that up slightly on there okay yeah that pressure curve is pretty good now this is a pretty decent sized brush we're at 175 and what i'm doing now is i'm just placing in some value and again look at this the pressure curve is so it's very slight i'm literally just letting the pencil rest and then i can push really hard on there now i do have this backward okay back to there so let's go ahead That feels really good, guys. I mean, really good. It's hard for me to convey how a machine, you know, it feels, obviously, because you're not here. <laughs> but overall, the pressure curve is just so nice. They've really done a bang up job um, with that. So let's go ahead and make that bigger. Okay, so now we're going to go back. I'm going to compare these two. It's the same nib in both of them. Believe it or not, this one feels thinner. It shouldn't. It is literally the exact same pen. Um, for those of you, like I said before, who use Microsoft devices a lot, you know that they have to be tuned. And I've said this before, no PC out of the box is going to run the best way that it can because it's got bloatware, because it's got settings in there that you have to change. I literally have, open, I haven't changed anything on this machine other than um, in Photoshop. The, uh, the cache number. And I think I might have changed the RAM because I think it was down to like 55% or something like that. Uh, and I think it runs pretty good. You know? Do I, th in comparison, because I get some questions are like, what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know because I don't use any Galaxy device at all. And I never have. Actually, I, I take that back. I used a Galaxy device. It wasn't Galaxy. It was made by, what in Huion? Who made that device? I had an Osair that I hated. I actually returned it because it stopped working. I had a, what was that? I ended up giving it away. It was running, running um, uh, whatever, Popsicle, KitKat. I don't, I don't know. I don't, Android. It was running an Android. And after the debacle, that I had of trying to get apps for it because the Android store was so bad. I just gave up. I gave up. So I just gave it away. The person got it was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm like, you enjoy that, buddy. Yeah, see, there's the anomaly. Yeah, I think it has to do with palm rejection. I think that there probably still needs to be a little bit more work done with palm rejection because it's not placing the cursor in the right place. It's just doing some weird little things that, you know, have the potential to be aggravating, you know? Okay. So I'm just going to put some color really quick and then we'll be done because I wanted to I'm going to make sure that she'll color well. Okay, so let's go add a layer. 
Uh, okay, we're going to go down here. Edit, fill, foreground color. Woohoo! Yay, that was fun. Okay, there's our shadow layer. Not getting too heavy in on the shadows, just because, again, this is trying to test out the ins and outs of the machine. So we're going to go ahead and put those highlights. So, yeah, I think it's me. So now I'm going to put my hand down. I'm going to scoot across. Go ahead and put that up there. I'm going to make that smaller. Okay. A little light right there. Okay. See, the way that I use these devices is literally I'll sit in my big comfy chair. I've got one behind me. It's a huge recliner. I'll have this right on my knee and I'll have my XP pen right on the arm of the chair. And I'll just sit there and draw. You know, it's very, very, very relaxing to be able to do that. Okay, so now we're going to go to a different brush. Let's go to one of the, you see, whoops. Where'd all my brushes go? Oh, there they are. Okay, so let's go general brushes. This is the ones that come. Let's do a hard round. And he's going to be, let's do a purple now. Let's do, let's do a mid-tone purple. Kind of in the mid, right? So this is intensity up here. This is saturation. Intensity, saturation, and then we have your, your tonal so let's go right about here. We're gonna make that brush pretty big. Let's make it huge. Okay, this is, <laughs> let's do, let's do 2,700. That's a 2,700 pixel brush. That's redonkulous. I don't see any, uh, just a slight lag. Let's make it smaller. Let's, let's make it more practical. Yeah, there's no lag. So excellent. So let's go ahead and put in, okay, we need to jack that opacity up. Flow, okay, that's fine. Okay, and you're like, well, why do you use a gray background? Well, gray helps me mentally uh, adjust my uh, values better. Let's go and get rid of that. It helps me adjust the values in my mind's eye and my brain because what I'm seeing is not against a stark white background. And I highly recommend, if you're not doing it now, to start. It will help you. This is a pro tip. Pro tip number one, please paint on a gray background or some type of background that is not white. Because it, it really helps you adjust your value range uh, much better overall, in my humble opinion. Okay, and I'm just going in and blanketing. I'm not, I'm not going in and, and rendering just yet. I'm just literally putting in, you know, this hue. He looks mad. I had one of my users uh, say, you do a lot of angry stuff. It's because I'm angry. Kind of like the Hulk, he's angry all the time. I'm just kidding, I'm not. Yeah, now you're noticing what it's doing. See, it's like I stop, I just, I lift, and then I go to put my pencil down and it doesn't register it. I think it's the pen. I think it's the pen that's causing the weird anomaly. The activation is lower. So it's just causing a little bit of an issue. Yeah. Let's make that bigger. There we go. That's a huge brush, dude. Let's see how big that is. That's 600 pixels on a 300 DPI document. That's pretty good. We are getting a little bit of palm rejection issues, just slightly, but I'm not getting really any false positives. 
which is good. Okay, let's rotate that slightly. And literally, this is this is how I will typically, oops, see, it did it again. Now, see, it goes over here, and then it goes here. And it's because the pen was not activated, and my hand was resting on the screen. I, I happen to think it, it's either the pen activation. See, if I keep it really close, we don't have any issues. The pen isn't activating. Yeah, it's doing, it's, it keeps doing weird things. Maybe you're having, yep, it, it, literally it, it keeps doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over. I've got, let's try a different pen. Hopefully you guys can see. Now I've got a Surface Pen. <clears throat> let's see if it does it. The thing with a Surface Pen is you got to flip it around into the eraser. Bump, bump, bump. First world problems, blomp, blomp, blomp. Okay. See the activation on the pin. See I go in. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Believe it or not, the activation on the pin, on the surface pin is lower than the Raphael. That's weird. get rid of all that let's see if it does it for you while I'm doing this yeah it does what it's doing is I'll be drawing and it'll go tut, 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 tut. it'll it'll jump it'll jump slightly and I'm not sure if that has to do with my palm resting or what it's just a weird it's a weird feeling and this is you know, imagine they've been. Imagine you've been working for Microsoft for a while, and the company touts the usability of its devices as an art option. And you're in that department, right? And you're working. You've been working for, with them for a while, and you're like, guys, there's a very simple way to get rid of all of the headaches, all of the time, all, all, all of it. And they're like, well, okay, Mr. Genius, what is it? And you're like, just license the Wacom Tech. Buy a freaking license for the Wacom Tech. Okay, so, sorry about that. I had a, yeah, see, that right there. That weird little anomaly. Weirdness. Oh, we don't know where your cursor is supposed to go, so we're going to put it wherever we feel like it's going to go. So it's obviously not the pen. It's neither one of my pens. I thought it might be the distance activation. It's not. It has to do with the Microsofts. So let's go back to my favorite pen. This is obviously my favorite pen, the Raphael 520. Wonderful pen. Wonderful. Stupendous. Marvelous. This pen's really good. Um, it's got quite a few things working for itself. Number one, it's a great alternative to the Microsoft Pen. Um, it works with uh, Microsoft Pen Protocol. <clears throat> Not active. I don't think it's the Active Stylus. I think that's a different protocol, Wacom Active Stylus. And then it works, not Wacom, um, whatever the Active Stylus technology is. See, there it is right there, right there. Oh, it did it. Okay. So yeah, obviously they don't have it fixed. I'm sure it'll be fixed in a different uh, update. It is only $45 and you can get it even cheaper uh, if you look around um, online. And I think it's one of the best uh, options out there. The activation's really good. It's got a trimmer or a slimmer barrel. The latency, it's almost zero latency. It's just so nice. It's hard to beat, you know? Okay. So let's do the teeth. So overall, here's, here's my review of the 7 and using Photoshop. 
Let's go ahead back. Where am I at? Am I on a different layer? Okay, so let's lock the transparency because I don't want stuff to go everywhere. In a pinch, do I think the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 is a viable option for doing work remotely? Yes. I think that it might benefit from a keyboard, like a wireless keyboard, and I might actually buy one of those and have it off to the side, similar to the way I had my Cintiq Companion, whenever I had one of those. Oops, ha <laughs> ha, false positive, ha <laughs> ha. Interesting. You can't do it, look at this. I can have no false positives right here. Look, it won't do anything, okay? But the second, <laughs> the second I, I, I avert my eyes and I start singing its praises, it's like, ha 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 ha, you suck. I'm gonna screw you over. And I'm like, come on, man, don't screw me over. But anyway, in a pinch, sure. I think it'd be a good option. Do I think it should should take over all of the duties? Duty. <laughs> all of the duties uh, for you? Let's get rid of all that. Oh, now I did it again. Now that was weird. Did you see that? What is going on? Palm rejection. Yeah, they still have to fix it. Um, even after a year. After a year! Uh, what was I saying? Oh, do I think it'll take care of all of your needs? No. That's the thing. You know, I, whenever I bought my ZBook, I was like, I'm going to use this machine exclusively. I'm going to use it all the time because it's supposed to be as powerful as my Macintosh. And really, that is... Ugh. Have you seen the ZBook? It's just amazing. And then I started using the ZBook. Yeah, see, there's weird anomaly things happening. Um, you know, and I and I started using it, and I, and it's still, you know, it's got that all-in-one technology, that all-in-one architecture on the inside. It is not a desktop machine. And frankly, that sucks. <laughs> you know. Because all I was doing is just like doing Photoshop. I yeah, see it's... One of the really cool things about ZBooks, if you don't, uh, if you've never um, used one or seen one, they've got this little button on the side that's pre-programmed and you just push it and it turns touch off. And that is one of the best features ever. Now I'm sure I can do that. I can pre-program something, but I tried to turn touch off on this machine and it completely crashed everything everything it, it the machine would not respond it's like how dare you turn touch off and it, it basically messed up but anyway like i said in a pinch sure is it gonna replace everything no is this the solution to all your problems no you know i think that's one of the things that i look for is honesty especially in a video review you know, I don't want to hear all the negatives. This machine did this. This machine didn't do that. It sucked. You know, and and it's hard, you know, whenever you review a machine like this because you, you know, you want it to do so much. But at the end of the day, even though it has Pro, the Surface Pro line is great for those who are illustrators and graphic designers and video editors and people in the professional field and yeah, so I guess sometimes, maybe if maybe if you're browsing the internet for your job, it brow dude, it browses the internet like you wouldn't believe. I mean, the pages open up. <laughs> it watches videos like the wind. <clears throat> you know, I'm just kidding, right? What I'm trying to tell you guys is. Right now, in the marketplace, I don't know of one machine that can do everything. That's why I've got like four machines, plus my desktop, you know? And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that because a lot of people don't have that ability to be able to have, you know, three and four machines to do, you know, the job of their one desktop. And and that's, that's hard. Now, I do know some people that here let's darken this running out of time here 
Um, I know, do know some people that use the iPad as a work machine. And, you know, after using it over the past couple days, I could see that happening. You know, they may, they've made a couple changes recently. That's pretty awesome. Let's do the pressure to the operating system. But I, I, I still need my desktop, you know, see, yeah, it's, it's the palm rejection. The palm rejection still needs work. It's, it's not finding out where the cursor is. Um, hopefully they'll fix that in the next couple updates. Hint, hint, Microsoft. All right. But as a, just a simple sketch machine, yeah, I mean, it does pretty good. It's not, it's not horrid, right? Let's do this. Move it down a little bit. Let's do a layer mask. Let's put some shatters, some shatters. Yeah, it just, I think it's literally, it's its the palm rejection messing up. It's not identifying where the cursor is effectively. And it just messing, you're messing my drawing up. So I think I might finish this one. Might, maybe. I'm not putting you on time lapse or anything. Don't worry about that. I might finish it. We'll see. I mean, even this one didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. The video, but you know, at least you understand that. Given you know, given whatever set of circumstances that you might be in, you know, you've got your surface with you. You've got a deadline. You have to sketch out something. You know, boom, you can do it. You can do it in Photoshop in the full version of Photoshop, not McDumb Down City, right? I think living on tablets, we're all inhabitants of McDumb Down City. Let's go ahead. And I want to run full versions. I remember, I've said this before, Going in on my Surface, I had a Surface Pro 3 at the time, and going in and testing the iPad um, Pro whenever it first came out. And I thought, I, why am I going to spend $1,300 for a machine that won't run full versions of Photoshop? It doesn't make sense, you know? And then I bought one. And it runs Procreate. It runs Procreate really well. Procreate's a great program. If those of you who don't or don't have the ability to use Procreate, go to the Apple Store and toy around with Procreate. You know, maybe it'll change your mind. It is a fun program. It also runs Sketchbook Pro. Um, and it does run Photoshop, but it's not a full version. And I'm sure... False positive! That... Uh, see, it's very interesting how that happens because I can't, I can't make it, I can't make anything work. But it's still, literally, it'll cause little anomalies like that. And you're like, what, what, where did that come from? You know, so I gotta come all the way down here, you know, do this, do the eraser. Ch -ch 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 all right. So, in a pinch, will she work? Jess, she will. She will Photoshop you. She will work pretty darn good. And I'm sure once I find out what layer that's on. I'm like, what? What? Um... It, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, it, if you take your time, if you're not like me and you're like, bum, 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 and you break everything, 
and then you complain, oh, it sucks. No, if you take your time, if you sketch in a, in a reasonable fashion, in a reasonable speed, and you don't sit there and, you know, it'll probably be great. I mean, you saw it. It did, it did pretty good on the sketch phase, you know? So anyway, so um, yeah, this is the stage where I say, please like and subscribe if you like what you see, please. Yeah, trying to go to channel, da, 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 da. Yeah, I am, but you know, if you like it, great. If you don't, that's okay too, right? Literally just showing you that the Surface Pro 7 does run full versions of Photoshop and it runs it pretty good. So I think the one thing, <laughs> the one thing, and this is going to sound terrible. Um, the one thing that, oh, come on, stupid thing, alt. The one thing that uh, the Surface has against it, there. Not gonna do that. Is Windows 10? Imagine. I mean, I can't even imagine the uh, the what you call it. The operating system guys. You know, they have to facilitate so many different things, and then you have an art guy that's like, "This system sucks." Well, it's actually pretty good. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say to you guys. And yes. Um, the Surface Pro 7 will run Photoshop 7. No. Will run full version of Photoshop. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Thank you, guys. Man. What an interesting video this was. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.